Well, let me add my welcome to everyone uh, in this great space. Um, John, Mark, Andrew, and Chris for making this wonderful place available to us. Uh, guests, participants, members of our leadership teams, and so many in the room who play such a vital part in the success of what is business in the community, quite a powerful movement. We will be joined shortly by His Royal Highness Prince of Wales, where we'll celebrate things, but I do have to say, and some of you who know me know I, I enjoy being on any stage, but I have to say, Chris, I think I particularly enjoy being on this stage, and perhaps the Albert Hall, um, and it's nice to see so much going on. We're, we spent a little bit of time talking about last year and how we did, and it was good news, but I want to spend a bit more time now talking about this year and where we're going and what are the issues and the priorities and the opportunities that we face. The theme of today is leadership. And in my 25 years here in the UK, much of that time spent leading organizations, global businesses, as not executive and as chief executive of various other bodies, I've had a little experience that, uh, in this whole space of leadership. I know a little bit about what you're going through. As the t-shirt says, this, this isn't my first rodeo. And I've, I've learned along the way that leadership, I guess like swimming, is something you can't learn from just reading about it. You have to do it. And we have some wonderful leaders in this room today, and we want to think about how we can celebrate that and expand on all of that. As you've heard, we're in a good place financially, more importantly, in terms of the impact measurement we're having on the programs and the initiatives and the communities in which we work within the organizations represented in this room. And that puts us in a good place to think about the future. But we're also, as was alluded to by John Spence earlier, at a bit of an uncertain time as we think about this new normal. Yes, the FTSE hit a record high yesterday, but yet when I listen to organizations, I'm hearing uncertainty, economic, political, social. Um, the uh, mega trends that are impacting all of your businesses, whether it's the aging population, whether it's the fast pacing uh, technological shifts that are happening around, out there, whether it's the disruption that's lurking behind every corner, these things are causing businesses to stop and think and pause a little bit, skill shortages, disruptive trends, geopolitical uncertainty, all begin to weigh a little bit heavily on people. It was interesting in the run up to Davos, and some of you will have been there, one of the surveys that I saw talking about confidence compared to the survey they had done a year before said more people in this survey were more confident about the future than last year, but also more people in this survey were not confident at all about the future than last year. So there was quite a, quite a divide in all of that. As we, and when you look at what the other issues that were on those debating tables around Davos, there were some very consistent themes. Equality, climate change, social cohesion, things that go to the very heart of what is business in the community and the messages that we have. And the issues against we're campaigning, battling against here, haven't really changed that much in a while, have they? The, the reality is that we as business people, by and large, aren't trusted out there. And the bigger your business, probably the less trust you have in that community. The press is filled again this week with stories about who's paying tax and where and what bonuses and other executive compensation programs are being identified. And we're also seeing an increasing issue around this whole idea of in-work poverty, social cohesion, the rising gap between the rich and the poor. And as we get closer to an election cycle, those will become even more relevant and pronounced, I think. And I suppose for me, it comes back to this fundamental debate about what is the very purpose of business? What is the purpose of your business? Is it simply to maximize shareholder value within the extent of the law? Or is it also about creating customer value? in community value, the virtuous circle that allows you to generate those profits. Is profit the purpose of your business, or isn't profit the outcome of being a good and successful and a responsible business? And those are the messages that we hope that we're driving out with what we do within the business and the community movement with all of your help. The argument we make time and again is that being a responsible business isn't about philanthropy, it isn't about giving back, it is about how you make your profits. It is about what goes on in the engine room of your business. And in the process, how you treat the planet, how you manage complex global supply chains, how you innovate and develop new products and services, how you create inclusive, healthy, diverse, engaged workforces, the biggest challenge that probably most business leaders have, but also how you engage in the communities in which you live and work around the big issues of the day, education, employment, enterprise, culture, all things that we care about as citizens, as humans, as parents, but also as business leaders, because it is part of what goes into creating value, living those values. It is a virtual circle, and I'm convinced of that. We, we try 
within our movement to both paint that compelling narrative, why should I care, what does this have to do with me, but more importantly, what are the practical tools and ideas that I can take to bring this idea to life? How do we turn that talk into action? And increasingly, we're trying to focus on the causes of these issues, not simply the consequences. By the time you get to the consequences, by the time someone's in prison, has given up and spent two or three years as an eat, it is very difficult to have them break that cycle. So what are the things that we can do along the way that accelerate that all a little bit? And that's where we're trying to spend an awful lot of our energy. Um, we welcome a new chairman, which is wonderful. So Anthony, it's so great to have you with us. And Mark, thank you so much for those kind words. And I'll say a little bit more about you in a few moments. Um, as I said, the theme today is leadership. And as we think about what is this contract that we talk around business and society, what does it mean to be a good leader in terms of how you demonstrate, advocate, reward responsible behavior in what we do? Um, how do we think about integrating this better? We talk about integrated reporting, a big, meaty, frustrating concept for those of us trying to bring it to life. We've got many companies in here. I'll be talking to Steve Holliday in a few moments from National Grid, one of the leaders in this space, and that may come up in our conversation a little bit. Um, but also, how do we hold on to these principles of transparency and bringing our stakeholders along with us on this journey? You've, you've probably heard me say this before, but when I, when I talk to you, when I talk to other members of our movement and I ask them how they're doing on this agenda, I get very encouraging anecdotal responses. But when I push and probe a little bit, I often hear that, but we'd like to do more and we're frustrated by it. And when, when I challenge why, what is it that we can do differently? What's the problem? It generally falls into three buckets. It's all so complicated. It feels like I'm trying to boil the ocean sometimes. So how can we as the business and the community movement and collective make this journey simple and easier for companies to get started on? Uh, I hear from employers all the time that my inbox is overflowing. I just don't have the time, the capacity to take this on. And part of that thinking, of course, is also that chief executives don't get to keep the jobs very long these days. And so people are very focused on their tenure and their short term. And as, as the saying goes, urgency is often the enemy of importance in all of this. But the final thing, and the greatest frustration that I probably hear from all of you, is that somehow it's difficult to translate this into language that you both your customers and your investors understand. Your customers don't want to pay for it, and your investors don't seem to ask you about it. So what is it that we can do to begin to change that dialogue a little bit? One of the areas that we're working on is around this whole engagement with investors. We've got a number of the leading funds in membership. We have got a whole slew of public companies. We've got pension trustees who are working with us and we're thinking about how we really change that dialogue. How do we make sure these are commercial conversations, that we're using metrics that compare period against period that people can understand, that we're helping organizations relate this to the core strategies of their business so that the funds begin to get a greater sense of what it is you are doing and why they should take that into account as they're valuing your business. It's, it's a long journey, it's a tricky journey, uh, but it's, we're confident that we can get there. Now, when we finish this event today, I've got the whole of the BITC family convening here this evening and in another venue tomorrow where we're going to review where we are and where we're going. And the themes of this year's focus, this fiscal year that we're in right now, that run across all of our campaigning and initiatives is how do we grow this movement? How do we make sure we increase our scale, our impact, and the value that we have to those who are participating in it? Secondly, how do we make sure that we finish what we start? We've got some big ambitious targets out there. Many of you are involved in various leadership teams and activities. We don't want to lose sight of what makes us unique and special. How do we make sure we hit those business connector targets, the school partnerships, the ready for work placements, the investor priorities that I'm talking about, and the list goes on and on. We want to think a little bit differently about how we can learn and share, particularly in this digital world. Um, Things are happening so differently and so quickly out there. How can we think a little bit differently? And just to digress on that, I don't know if you noticed in that what's now being called the flash crash in Switzerland, where the currency moved 17% against the euro in 54 seconds. The same event happened in 1992 when sterling decoupled from the ERM, and it took weeks, seconds against weeks for the same event. Well, this is the world in which we're now living, and we want to make sure as a collective and a movement we're thinking about this. So how do we use social media, our websites, the great stories that you have out there to get this message out in a different way in an increasingly creative and clever way? 
And then finally, I guess on that point, is how do we make sure that we raise the profile of this movement and the activities that we're doing? So we've been, we've been thinking quite a bit about how we do that. You will have seen on some of the banners that are up there referring as a bit of a brand extension to business in the community being the Prince's Responsible Business Network. And just what does that mean? We've been thinking about this alphabet soup of brands that we have and names and confusing things. And how do we begin to simplify and focus that so people understand what are the big issues that we're talking about, the planters that we use to celebrate membership, people who have won awards who are active on our various leadership teams or engaged with us somehow. How can we both make it easier for you to use those things and how can we encourage you to put them not just on your letterhead but in your lobbies and on your transport vehicles and other things so we can, we can spread the movement out there. But we've also been thinking about our language a little bit and we've, we've decided that we're going to categorize most of our campaigning activity under five categories, the five E's that we're talking about, education, employment, enterprise, the environment, and employees each with, we hope, a compelling purpose uh, behind it, the big why, what are the big things we're trying to change out there? These are ambitious, they're bold, we can't do it on our own, we won't be the only ones participating, but collectively we can have a real impact. But also then to think about the what and the how that goes behind that. What are the practical tools and ideas and things that we have that will make all of that happen? I mean, the real USP that is business in the community are the people in this room the leaders, the members, the, the tens of thousands of employees you have out there every day doing things that matter um, in these communities. That's the power of what we have. And we hope that we can bring a suite of tools and ideas, the programs, the research, the guidance, the, the benchmarks, the awards, and of course the Seeing is Believing program. And we have many in the room today who have been on visits this year and previous years. A very powerful tool is seeing is believing in terms of recruiting and engaging people. We've had some 260 delegates out this year and some 9,000 since this program's inception. And so many of us in this room have joined this movement because of that seeing is believing visit. Anthony Jenkins and Stephen Howard included. Uh, I can't tell you the number of people that I've talked to who have been on a visit years ago and remember who they were with, what they saw, and the impression that it made on them. When they struggled, remember so many other things in between. So we know we have a powerful tool. We're delighted that Vivian Hunt is going to be taking on the chair of that work for us as we think about how we expand on this whole idea of experiential learning and how we really begin to build on the strong momentum that we've had. And just, just one example of what we've seen in recent periods, the Water Task Force that has formed as a result of a Seeing is Believing visit a while back that Steve Mumford, the chief executive of UU, led that has resulted in a collaboration of the big water companies, the major water users, and government to think about what we can do about these big issues of resilience, stewardship, and innovation. Another example of a very exciting outcome from this program. Now, business in the community is all about impact. We talk all the time about all the quantitative data that we have, how many came today, how many joined this and do that. But, but of course, that doesn't really matter. What matters is, are we making a difference out there in the communities in which we live and work? So when we think about our impact numbers, we want to think about the scale, the leverage, and the community impact that they have. And the scale side, we probably engage with and have get some income from, which often helps, some 2,000 companies every year that employ collectively 10 million people. When we think about leverage, a great example is the, the Business Connectors program. For every pound that the big lottery has put into this program, they can see how seven pounds have ended up in community impact through matching funds from the corporates, in-kind giving, and so forth. So it is that leverage creation that creates the real momentum out there. And of course, how do we make sure that we're focusing down into the communities? Um, that really matter here and get it local. The mantra that we use internally is no numbers without stories and no stories without numbers. The stories bring it to life, the individual cases, the journeys that people have been on, and we're going to hear one of those in just a moment. But we also have some big issues out there, and we've got to think about how we, how we tackle these things at scale. Mark mentioned earlier, and, and John, that this is the, the beginning of the 30th anniversary year of the Prince of Wales as our president. So as we think about the impact that he has had up to this point and as we take it forward around these big issues of leadership, what, is, what does good leadership look like today and where is it going? About employee engagement and how we make them the game changers out there and how we begin to think about how business works in our local communities. He has been such a champion and we'll hear from him in a few moments. 
The other thing I'd like to do is put, as we're, as we're kind of going through some of this, the, the new members that we have in the organization. We're delighted to have you with us on this journey. We have many represented in the room today. We'll have an opportunity to get some pictures and things later on as we do this. Just to remind you all, this is a journey, not a destination. And so we hope that you stay with us and work with us as you think about the impact that you can have. The feedback that we get from you is very positive and very encouraging. You are tough audience. You are critical friends. You have lots of ideas on how we can do things better, perhaps a bit more efficient, how we can drive our costs down. And those ideas are all welcome. But what warms my heart is that you overwhelmingly tell us that you recommend us to other people, that you see us as a go-to place for different kinds of activities and support. So when we, you know, just a, a couple of examples, community investment, as we can work with organizations on helping them make sure that the work that they do out there is relevant to their business, that, that makes sense and matters to their employees, can be managed and planned like all the other money that you spend, that, that really does work in collaboration with others that creates that leverage, and that, that ultimately you can measure your impacts out there, the thing that we're really trying to drive. Or in the, in the space of environmental sustainability where we've got some some tricky esoteric even kind of academic ideas like shared value or circular economy how do we how do we take those things and turn them into practical outcomes how can we use some of the wonderful examples that are happening out there with, with Veolia and so many other organizations and inspire others to behave that way how can we think about new business models and how can we create that traction on the international front we have some 140 partnerships around the world now that that can help you take this practice that you've got domestically and build it into your international organizations. As we think about how we work around the Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Agenda, Disaster Relief International, a cracking good team that is working around that and we're making some real progress. Social finance, a big area. We were talking about only today about things like social impact bonds and other interesting tools that we can use to fund, fulfill, drive, and to think a bit more creatively about how we keep the momentum going on all of this. And of course, some very practical things in our local communities around things like healthy high streets that are part of the, the, the social cohesion of our units, uh, helping and nurturing the small businesses that are in our communities as well, the SMEs that are in your supply chains. And there are so many more examples out there, so I won't, I won't bore you with all of those. But really just two final thoughts before I invite Steve Holliday up to join me. One, very proud to report that business in the community has been seen as one of the best places to work in the UK and we will be in the in the Times top 100 that will be announced tonight I believe Francoise and so we're very excited about that and, and I guess the final thing that I would say right now is an ask of all of you and that is to stay with us commit to active engagement really do bring your employees with you on this journey across your organization not just in a few offices not just in the head office across the organization develop those action plans and look at them regularly. Challenge yourself and let us help you challenge one another a little bit with it. And also to be advocates for what we do. You've all got the lapel pins. I can kind of see them shining in the light there. Wear them, be proud of them. Tell people about what this is. Help us get that message out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.